So here we have a model that you'll see that one side has been picked up and contoured, okay? The other side has a pickup done and they've added acrylic here, but it has not been contoured, okay? So we're gonna go through steps from contouring in this contour exercise. The other thing to note is that for this model, um, there's no holes made for the smart denture. So we can actually um, go ahead and do that. Sometimes it helps to figure out um, when you're doing the contours here, where the screw access hole is coming out from there. So for the smart denture drills, we'll have three drills. The first drill is the first uh, drill that goes in from the back end this way. It's the skinniest drill. The second drill has a step to it and it comes in through the clusal to make the screw access hole. And the last drill actually goes on the hand reamer, okay, and is not put on a hand piece. Okay, so we have the first drill. But we're gonna go from the inside here. It's set on a straight hand piece to about, we'll probably drill at about um, uh, four or five RPM. And here you wanna make contact with the separable fastener and in a pecking motion, go in and out. Careful not to lean on the actual tie base and the metal. Make sure you're only cleaning out resin. So you'll see a pecking motion and it drills through the top of it. Okay, so you remove that. Clean out the flutes, okay, and then go to your next one. So when you look at the screw access hole, see all the metal is still present around the separable fastener. The separable fastener is still there, okay? And when you look at it from the top, these are the implant angles, or the multi-unit angles. The next drill is put on the straight hand piece. We're gonna come in down from the top angle, following the same direction, and you'll notice that this drill actually has a stop to it. It's got a butt joint. This is meant to stop when you hit the top of the tie base. Okay, so we're gonna follow the trajectory. Okay, a lot of times I'll put my finger there and I'll aim towards my finger. And just follow the path that we're going in. And you can see from the top that the top of this drill is starting to peek through. Okay, so you can see Okay, and what we want to do is once we get through there, okay, we want to take it a couple times and pump it a couple times. Give it a good couple pumps, okay? To make sure that you really have the top of that drill coming through, okay? So once that's done, you'll see from the inside that separable fastener is still present and there's your screw access channel. Second drill's been done. You can see the separable fastener. Clean channel. And you flip it to the inside. Separable fastener is still in there. So now, before we place this in the patient's mouth, we have to remove the separable fastener. So we're gonna use the last drill. It does not go in a hand piece. It goes in a hand reamer, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go five. I just go in clockwise here. You go five at normal pressure, and go five at harder pressure, okay? You go five, you wobble, okay? And you go five light pressure, and you'll see that some of the material is coming out in the flutes. And sometimes if you're lucky, the separable fastener comes out, okay? So if you look at the inside, the flutes have been, the separable fastener has been kind of churned, you look on the, on the other side, it's still there, okay? A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the first drill again, and from the opposite side that touches the tissue, I just come an angle and I push through, and here's that separable fastener. Okay, so when you look at the inside of that tie base, you'll see that there's no separable fastener there. Okay, in fact, if you actually take that last reamer drill, if you stick it through, you'll see that the tip of it will actually engage all the way to the end. Okay. Let's come back and there you go. Okay. Now that we have the screw axis completed, let's get ready to contour this. Okay, so with the Sharpie, I'm just gonna show you what I do not want to contour. So on this side, acrylic's been added to just add to make all the tie bases flush with each other. So with the Sharpie, 
I'm just going to connect a line between the tie bases. Okay. It's going to be a lot of times I do this without drawing a line, but this is the imaginary line in which we're not going to touch anything. So everything here is going to be the pontic that shapes and touches the tissue. Okay. So with our armamentarium, the first drill we're going to use, we're going to use this drill. Okay. This is meant for gross excess, or actually for this, you, because there's still some flange left there, we can actually use this spear drill. Okay, so this spill drill can be used for areas where there's a flange like this, okay? And we're probably running this about 15 RPM, and you're basically just using it to cut through, okay? So that's what that sharp drill does, okay? Now we're gonna switch to the second drill, okay? This drill is good for bulk excess. Now, for the purpose of this material, this is printed resin, so don't push too hard because it's pretty brittle. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove everything I don't need, okay? So with this drill, this is probably, I've taken off material vertically. See my lines are still there. Now we could also debulk it on the lingual side, okay? So it's not so thick. And I would probably use this, you could still use this drill here and you'll see how we thin things out. And the reason I like to do this contouring with the screw access hole is I can thin it out in this direction, but pay attention to where this will be. So. On the facial side, you can also debulk it a bit. Okay. Okay, so with this burr right here, this is probably everything I would do. You could already see it's pretty debulked. Now for the next part, you can either use this drill, this drill right here, or a pear shaped burr. The pear shaped burr I like for the lingual side, so you get a little bit of a concavity. So you'll see again here, I'll take it closer to the black line that I marked. I won't necessarily remove it, okay? but you can start to really debulk everything here. Okay, so up on this side, I'm looking at where the screw axis is, so I don't make it too thin. Okay. We want everything rounded. Now for the facial side, I like to use this burr, okay? 
And I can actually even create more festooning here if I wanted to. And I'll take this closer to that dark line again. Okay, careful not to hit the tie bases. And you see my black line is still there. Okay, but I can really take it in closer and I can even create a little bit of festooning And if you are converting a monolithic denture, you could really develop some nice festooning here and not worry about the teeth popping off. If it's a conventional denture, you may have to worry about removing too much of the pink acrylic that holds the teeth in place. Point, I'm pretty much done with all my um, carbide brush. Now we can either move to the polishing burrs, and I'd probably use this wheel first here, okay? And what we can do is we can run this wheel up against that black line, and, and this doesn't cut as much, this actually polishes. And I'll take it back and forth, and I'll really make everything rounded at this point, okay? The other thing you can do is with about four or five RPM, you can lightly run it over the tie base to get off any flash of acrylic, okay? That acrylic will prevent you from seeding. You wanna see a clean metal margin and again, you can come back, round things off and even start to polish the added acrylic in between, okay? And if you want to then come back and make everything prettier in the front here, it's a nice bird to create some festoon. My burr is constantly moving, okay? Which is what you want. And then for the inside here, you can okay. again here to remove the shelf here. This spur is also very nice, to smoothing any of this these ledges. Right. So the last polishing burr, or the green acrylic polishing burr, is the big barrel one. This is where we can really thin out the, the lingual side here. And again, see it's rounded. You can really smooth this portion out. Always keep the burr moving. This is the distal extension. Round that out. Again, you can even come over where your Pontex are. Okay. And this burr is really nice at contouring this side. So I basically just run it back and forth. Then on this side too. Okay. So 
at this point, if you had a lathe, you can take this to the lathe. But if uh, you don't have the lathe, what we can use, we'll use these two last brushes here, okay? So we can use this thing that is almost like a scotch break, And we can use it just like we use this one in a similar fashion. And we can lightly run it through. And again, you can run it on the lingual side here. Always keep it moving. And you can come to your fasuning. if you wanted to, you can use this bristle brush in the same fashion. done so we look even within the pre picked up portion on the right side see how much thicker everything is okay the way I've contoured on this side is so that only this area here okay and I'm gonna actually outline that in blue as this area here will be the only thing touching the tissue as supposed opposed to this side here okay um, this side may be one way of contouring uh, the material if you're worried about fracturing but I like to be bulk mine like this especially if I'm using a uh, monolithic denture okay